You're going on dates. He's doing things for you. And you're letting him know what you like to do. You're not being immature or thinking he should know everything you like to do. You know, don't expect that of a man. That's just unrealistic. Yes, if he just suddenly is a mind reader and does it, yes, you'll feel like a little teenage girl and oh my God, this is a celebrity. Yeah, no, the reality is he doesn't know. You let him know. Here's a few things. This is things I know you want to know what I like to do. So here's three things I like to do and keep changing it up. What else do you want to do this weekend? These are things I'd like to do. Most women don't do this. This is, but it works. Okay. It's just now he knows and now he can pick and then he can take credit for it. You know, if my wife says, let's go to this movie tonight. And I say, okay. And then after the movie, we're talking about how great the movie is. And she tells her friend and the friend says, well, how'd you pick that movie? I picked it. Well, he's going to feel like a loser. And she's going to feel like I'm in charge of everything, which she doesn't want to feel. She wants to feel we're a partnership. So she makes it, this is women's wisdom. She makes it so I can take credit for it. And you know how women are. If a man takes credit for something, a woman takes credit for, I have a man that did that for me. You know, right. if, if flowers show up in the office if, you know, on Valentine's Day and, and <laughs> her, she puts a feather in her hat because her husband did that for her. He'll put a feather in his hat because he did that for her. But if she had to order the flowers and send them to him, it's a different hormonal reaction. We just have to realize this is this is what romance is about. This is what unquenchable desire is about and passion. It's, it's simply always getting excited. Now, you know, in the beginning, you touch fingers, there's electricity, all right, because this is all imagination. What's going to happen now? Life, life's going to get better. Reality sets in, maybe you touch fingers, it doesn't excite you so much. But when you get into the bed and you start loving each other and touching each other, that excitement comes back and even more if you know the dynamics of becoming more feminine in the bed and he becomes more masculine in the bed. And the masculine is to reassure a woman that she is loved. Everything I've talked about is men giving reassurance that women, they're not alone, that she has a man who stands by her and is prioritizing her over everything. So that's masculinity. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And she is going to her feminine side, which is, I don't have to do anything. See, when women talk about empowerment, I know the whole thing is empowered women, look what I can do and I can get to the glass ceiling and I can be just like a man and I need to be better than a man. <laughs> okay, so, and, and, and then complain that I'm better than men and I get paid less, whatever you want to complain about. Okay, so I'm on my male side. Uh, that's male empowerment. Okay, so you're a really great man. Female empowerment, if you look at the extremes of the power of femininity, is the power to attract support, the power to have other people do things for you, the power that draws in support for you. A man who wants to, he kneels before you to propose, would you marry me? That's the man you want. And so you want, if you want to go back to that man who did that, you have to go back to being the person you were at that time. And who were you at that time? Well, you were insecure. You wanted to know, do you like me? Do you love me? Am I beautiful? Do you want to be with me? Will you be monogamous with me? Are you committed to me? Are you sure? Are you happy to be with me? Do you think you want to marry me? All those insecurities are there. If you want to feel what you felt in the beginning, that's the biggest estrogen stimulator is be honest to yourself. You're insecure. I can be honest to myself. I'm insecure. That's why I don't walk around feeling insecure. But the reality is when I say a standing ovation is a different experience for me than a, people just clapping, good job. You know, that feels good, no problem. But why does more make me so excited? Because a part of me is always doubting, am I enough? Always doubting, am I enough? Whether I'm conscious of it or not, the motivation, I'm combing my hair, putting on this shirt, putting on this, 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 inter this interview, am I good enough? I want to be good enough because a part of me is afraid. This is subconscious. If I do something wrong, I will disappoint others. I don't want to disappoint others, right? So we're motivated. Well, for women, it's not, am I enough? For women, it's, do I deserve? Okay, this is like, yeah. I remember in the 90s, because I'm a man, I don't relate to it, but all these commercials would say to women, and you deserve it, <laughs> and you deserve it. I go, of course I deserve it, you know, but a man is always looking, am I good enough? You know, I can, you watch movies of, of TV shows on all these multimillionaires and immediately feel small in size until I realize that, wait a second, I in my own life, I'm great. They have their life. They have their different journey. There's this focus on money. Mine's focused on love. That's my values. So I have to sort of build myself back up in the presence. You know, it's that's what men are all about is am I good enough? Am I do I make a difference? This is what's hidden, lurking in, in between. That's why everything I've said today, how to respond to a man, because how you respond to a man with positive feelings. Or revealing things that you don't normally share, 
And I have to qualify that. In the beginning, do not reveal things to him. Judgments or criticisms are trying to change him. That's not it. And never try to change him, man. Just ask for help. <laughs> That's the key. You're not trying to change him, just letting him know this would make me happy. So the dynamic here is inside of a woman, I'm taking a big circle so that women may be, may be able to find this part of them, which is insecure, which needs reassurance. Why do you need reassurance that you're beautiful, that you're loved, that you're not alone, that I'm there for you, I'm the guy, I'm happy with you, I'm not angry with you. If I was angry, I'm not angry now. I'm always so grateful to be with you. You're the one for me. I'm so happy I married you. You know, I'm glad to do things. Today I was working really hard and I wanted to work harder because I know it'll make us more money and then we can go on that great vacation, whatever it is. See, these are things that men need to say and it will have no effect it will have less effect on a woman unless she's aware of the part of her that needs to hear that. And she needs to hear it every day of her life in some way or another. I give her hugs, four hugs a day. That's reassuring her she's in my life. Bonnie used to tell me, John, I need reassurance. I had no idea what that meant. I married you. I support you. What do you need reassurance for? Until she reveals to me, you know, part of me feels insecure. So when I had that woman wanting to come on to me, I came home, I said, honey, you know, sex care guy can be meaningless. I mean, it's just fun to do. This woman wanted to have sex with me. I got turned on. I mean, I completely love you, but I'm a guy. So, it, you know, I, I, so I wonder, is it okay if like I'm away, I'm never going to see the person again. I can have sex with them. Is that going to be a problem? Can, can you give me permission? She said, John, I don't want to tell you what to do. All I can say is if I thought that you were having sex with another woman, I'd feel very insecure and be afraid that you could leave me for somebody else who was better than me. And I'm getting older, we all get older, I would feel insecure. And my heart couldn't grow and I have to start protecting myself, knowing that you're not mine. You're not mine. See, everybody has a bad word on attachment. No, that's what sex is, it's total attachment. I'm yours, you're mine, and we're one. That's a beautiful thing. That's complete attachment and freedom at the same time, because I'm not trying to change you. So she said, so beautifully, I don't want to change you. I don't want to control you. I can just tell you what I feel inside. And if you were to do that, so many men do those things. My father did those things. My father did those things. But all I can say to you is I would start feeling more insecure and I wouldn't be able to grow in my ability to love you and be happy. So that would be your gift to me. I said, honey, you got it. See how, see how she communicated that to me? It didn't make me feel like, oh. It's what, a, what an inspired answer she gave. 